Hello, welcome to our semiconductor education program. I am Vincent Chan. In this lecture video, we're going to continue our learning around integrated circuit bias and focus on how to solve the output resistance of the current mirror. Current mirror and the current source, part three, output resistance. Let's start with the right-hand side, where you see a basic bipolar current mirror. I-O represent the output current, V-O represent the output voltage. The left-hand side shows the output characteristic of the current mirror. Again, the output current as a vertical, and V-O, output voltage as a horizontal. And I-O versus V-O happens to be what? to be IC versus VCE for a certain VBE. For a given VBE, then you can have this. You can have this, right? This is because the early voltage is not infinite. In other words, one of the physical effects has to be already been considered. It's called early effect or base width modulation effect when VC is increased and then IC gradually goes up. The boundary between the saturation and the full active region is what we call VCE saturation. Now, if we put down the relationship between IC and the VBE, VCE, it's going to be like this, right? On the left-hand side, you see the expression for IC1. IC1 is very, is close to I reference. Let's neglect the, the base current error, which we already considered before. Equals the first term exponential times the second one plus a linear term with respect to VC. So VC divided by VA, this is the IC1. We can do the same thing for IC2 which is I-O, which is I-O. You see what changed in the, on the previous slide is this. I don't know if you pay attention to this because VC1 equals VB. We replace, for the Q1, we replace VC1 with VB. We can do the similar things with for Q2, now we replace VC2 with what? With VO. Now what do you see now? There's a chance the left-hand side current and the right-hand side current become equal. At what point? The first item, exponential item, Ix exponential VB or VT are the same. Look at both sides, all right? Left and the right. Well, I want you now to look at the both sides, right, right and the left. So the only chance to make these two current equal is VO equals VB. When VO equals VB, then IO will be equals to I reference. Got it? When VO equals VB, VC2 equals VC1, then IO will be equal to I reference. So at, only at that red point, it will be matched. The left-hand side and the right-hand side will be exactly the same. However, if you have a different VO, which most likely you have any type of VO, then IO will not be equal to I reference. Which means what? Which means this current mirror is not it's not great, right? Because you claim you are a constant current mirror. You are the constant current source. So ideally, what's the con what do you mean by constant current source? What's the perfect output characteristic? It should be like this, right? It should be like this. It should be like, let me, let me put down this. Let me, it should be 
It should be like this. If you are called, if you claim yourself is the constant current source, that means you need to provide a constant current independent of output voltage. Get it? In other words, the slope should be what? The slope should be infinite. In other words, the slope is, <laughs> this is wrong, okay? The so I make a mistake. The slope should be zero. Which means, <laughs> with 30 years or more experience teaching a microelectronic, I'm still making a mistake. That means what? That means if you can make a mistake, that means you are still young, okay? Well, I'm young. I'm young, right? I'm still young. <laughs> slope zero means what? Means infinite output resistance. So the infinite output resistance means what? Means when output voltage change, I/O will not change. That's the concept. But in reality, because of some of the non-ideal characteristic, like the base width modulation, the I/O will goes up. Where's my? I'm just try to find out, find out this. <laughs> Spread things around. But I want to engage with you. Make sure you understand. I break down every pieces, piece by piece to make sure you have the solid foundation. I don't take you leap, leapfrog, right? I, I want to make sure you have a very, understand every detail. So now, what's the slope? Already give you the answer, right? The slope is not zero, means the upper resistance is not infinite. The slope means what? Means the delta IO divided by delta VO. The inverse of the slope is the upper resistance. The delta VO, divided by delta IO, which is the upper resistance of the individual transistor Q2. Got it? The finite, the imperfection of the current mirror is caused by the upper resistance, which comes from the physical base width modulation effect of the bipolar transistor, of the output transistor Q2. I want to go a little bit deeper further. I use the simulation to help you understand better now, here's the circuit. We are going to simulate. I, I strongly encourage you to use any tool that you can use and get the characteristic IO to draw the relationship between IO and the VO. Reference currency, the supply voltage 15 volt, 15 deduct 0 0.7 across 14.3, 1 milliamp. 1 milliamp on the left hand side, now, pay attention to the model description. The model description, top model ambient transistor, MPN, saturation current. Beta, BF, represent beta, 100. Early voltage, VAF, 100 volt. This is the input data. 100 volt represent the early voltage. Which means what? Which means... You can estimate the output resistance of Q2. R2, early voltage divided by the bias current, which is around 1 milli, so it's about 100 kilo ohm. So you get an idea, about 100 kilo ohm. So now let's pay attention to the DC sweep command. DC sweep command. Dot DC, let's scan VO. You can easily do this with any simulation software, all right? Dot DC, and then what? Scan VO, let's say from 0 to 6 volt with a step size of 10 millivolt. You ask the computer uh, software, every 10 millivolt, calculate once. Every 10 millivolt, calculate once. Then you get this. The vertical axis is IO, horizontal is VO, so you get this. And then, what? IO versus VO. 
I O versus vertical is I O. <laughs> I made some weird sound to make sure you won't fall asleep. I O versus V O like this, and then hey, what? You see, here's the first takeaway. Here's the first takeaway. V C saturation. You see the boundary voltage to nineteen millivolt, which means zero point two. Zero point two. Is a good approximation. All right, zero point two is a good approximation. What we call VCE saturation. In other words, the minimum acceptable upper voltage is zero point two volt. Below zero point two volt, disqualify as a current source or current mirror. Constraint for the current mirror. Takeaway number one. Constraint of the current mirror VO has to be above 0.2 volt. Make sure the output transistor is always stay in the constant current region, saturation region, oh, no, not saturation, forward active region. And then the second, I want you to dig further to find out the slope of this line. You see that gradually goes up. You cannot see this by your eye, right? Even your eyesight, maybe you're a little bit, you see a little bit goes up. I can, I can do this. Because my eyesight kind of got <laughs> deteriorated. <laughs> well, well, computer can see this. So you get a slope, and remember the slope is represent what? The inverse of the output resistance. All right? That's the result you get from the simulation. And compare this one with the left hand side, the hand analysis they kind of reconcile each other reconcile with the simulation result with the direct hand analysis today's concept is very very important because we're going to repeatedly calculate the output resistance for different types of current mirror in the future so we want to make sure you understand the fundamental concept of the output resistance why we are doing this all right so we have come to the end of the lecture video. Remember the fundamental concept of the output resistance. See you next time. Thanks for watching.